Okay, so now it's on you guys. You've got a few now to pick from. One that I like in particular, the music one I like, that auditory, remember that like humming that basically stops any conscious thought. But if you're talking about rebellion in particular, right, it depends how you're wording your argument. You can talk about the reason that he wants to rebel. There's that contrast between the mute protest in your own bones and you know, the ideal which was huge, terrible and glittering and then the reality was those things. You could talk about the contrast there which inspires the motivation to rebel if you wanted to make that point at early on in the paragraph. If I then go ahead, you've got the drowning out of conscious thought. Do you remember that? With the sound, always sound playing, always music coming from the telescreen. But I tell you what I like, with the psychological autonomy, what do you notice there? For perhaps two seconds, he was back in the half forgotten world of his childhood. It's, it's a really good opportunity in the second paragraph, all right, if you want to emphasize the power of going back into memory, that that's his escape. That's another word you could use, an escape. So the individual motivation to escape from present oppression is highlighted here through the, we can say, aniric. Do you guys know what aniric means? Write this word down. O-N-E-I-R-I-C. And put in brackets, that means dreamlike dreamlike. Do you notice that whenever he talks about the past, it seems to be kind of dreamy? Like half forgotten world. There's this low modality as well. Does everyone see low modality? For perhaps. He's not sure, right? And that's that fallibility of memory that some of you have already spoken about. But in any case, it's his escape, right? So it's his escape, but it's obviously a vulnerable escape. Okay, so anyway, you can talk about psychological autonomy, but the fact that it's exploitable, which we have already touched on. If you've already touched on that point, don't repeat that point. What about this one? I really like this one, okay? This is a favorite. The more men you've had, the more I love you. Anaphoric repetition. What does anaphora mean or anaphoric? So can everyone see how it says the more, the more? If you look at next to the comma, the more men you've had, the more I love you. Does everyone see that? That is anaphora. That's called anaphora, right? Or anaphora. We'll call it ana anaphoric repetition is probably a nicer way of saying it in the sentence. Cool. So I really like that because if you want to move forward to his attempt to rebel and the fact that he's attracted to Julia's promiscuity, that she's been with a lot of men, those hedonistic behaviors, that's what he's attracted to and that's what he will act on in defiance of Big Brother. He, he loves her defiance. She's also kind of depicted as a masculine character. I'm just flagging a few points. Do you guys see this? Julia enjoyed her work, which consisted chiefly in running and servicing a powerful but tricky motor. She was not clever, but was fond of using her hands and felt at home with machinery. Does that sound like your typical feminine woman? But back then, I could say uh, it's probably not. It, it's not. It's not consistent with the traditional archetype of femininity, which was definitely not to get your hands dirty, right? But what does it play into? Yeah, the new Soviet woman is your specific contextual link. Remember, you don't want those vague context links, you want specific ones. So if you can mention that it's about that conception of the new Soviet woman, where Stalin basically wanted a woman who was not only this like kind of, he doesn't want the stay-at-home mother, he actually wanted a, a wife and a mother who was head of the family, but also who worked. So there is this kind of subversion there. He's trying to reconstruct the familial unit and strip away the femininity of the wife. Do you guys see that?